from crease to crease and corner to corner. Better Hockey Now is NHL fantasy and betting done better. Step into the dot for Better Hockey Now on the Better Sports Network. Welcome into another edition of Better Hockey Now here on the Better Sports Network and Fantasy Alarm. I'm Adam Bernard, and uh, my line mates, as always, are Mr. Anthony Rivera. You can find him on Twitter at at AntRivera86, and Mr. Christopher Merez at FuzzyChris91. I'm at Pucking Thoughts, and uh, we're recording this on one of the last days of September, which means we need to change the calendars to October this weekend. And you know what that means, folks? Puck drop is, we can say, around the corner, and it is around the corner. And it's very exciting. Hi, guys, like, preseason hockey's been on. Like, I haven't been maybe watching as much as I should, but uh, how much preseason hockey have we been digesting when the games have been aired on your local provider? Rangers Devils was on yesterday, and I didn't even watch. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah, it, it's tough to do preseason. I get it. You know, you, you're watching for some of the, the you know, guys that may make the team. Like for the Devils, you know, obviously you're looking out for Luke, Luke Hughes, who's probably going to be on the team anyway. But uh, Simon Nemich is a guy that could possibly break with the team. There a lot of talk with, uh, with Holtz as well possibly making the team. So you you look for that. You see how those kids are doing. But to watch an entire preseason game, I don't know if I can get into it. I don't know how Chris feels about that, but I'll let him take it away from there. No, I have no problem watching it. I've watched a little bit here and there. I've watched a full, complete game. Same thing. I'm, I'm looking for players just to see how they're how they're doing, the type of chemistry that you know coaches are trying to build, their preseason line, so they mean absolutely nothing. Uh, but it's nice to see what certain coaches are trying to experiment with um so yeah like you said adam we can we can finally play as of sunday i think it's the first we can finally play the green day song uh because it we have officially made it that far that yeah that's very exciting i'll have to cue that up on the playlist and yeah preseason hockey like not that i really have much of the time anymore but like yeah if i can watch a game end to end i will but like you said you're looking for if you got guys, you know, for, is that a roster battles? Who's going to make like that bottom line or that third line spot or bottom defense preparing? Yeah, you can't really, really lead too much into lines in the preseason because, yes, they may be trying things out they're going to use in the season, but they also may be trying things out that it's like, hmm, just in case I want to switch to this, what would this look like? It's all about experimenting. These guys pretty much know the lines they're going to be going into the season with. So, but it is still, it's hockey and it's better than not watching hockey, but. We are mere days away from games counting here, and uh, good luck oh, yeah. in your uh, fantasy drafts here in the coming weeks as well. Very exciting. Hockey, Very right exciting. around the corner, yes. Now, we've spent probably the past two months here on Better Hockey Now doing mock drafts of various formats on various platforms, trying to help you get ready for your uh, upcoming fantasy drafts. The next two episodes today and next time, we're going to be focusing more on the betting angle. We're going to look at uh, team, divisional, conference, Stanley Cup champion futures. And then next week, we'll look more at the awards and some of the player, maybe some player props that we like going into the season. But today, it is all about, uh, let's talk team futures here. And we're going to, you know, I know we usually start east and go west, but we're going to go a little bit different today. Let's start out in the central division. That's, a, you know, it, it's pretty open uh, at the top. You know, Colorado is the favorite. Dallas kind of right there. Um, Minnesota. They're in that second tier of the division, and then it gets kind of murky after that with Winnipeg, with expecting to move Connor Hellebuck. St. Louis and Nashville, you know, not bad teams, not good teams. And then Chicago, of course, Connor Bedard and Arizona is perpetually developing young talent. So you see the odds on the screen there up uh, by courtesy of points bet for the Central Division. And, you know, when I look at the Central Division to start here, uh, you know, I hate to go chalk, you know, you don't want to always give like the top team, but I just think the Avalanche went healthy. They're just that much better than the rest of the division. I know Dallas improved, um, but again, if for, for my pick for the division, and while I think Dallas could win it, the Avalanche at plus 150 on DraftKings is the way I'm going. Uh, you know, as long as everything goes the way it's supposed to there, there's no reason to think they won't win that division again. It's a two horse race, really, right? It's between whatever Colorado does and whatever Dallas does. That's it. There's nothing else. I mean, I think Minnesota can keep it close. They are the dark horse there. I think defensively, they are good. Their goaltending is elite. Uh, but do they have the scoring outside of Karel Kaprasov? 
Probably not. Uh, and again, no offense to the Arizona Coyotes or the Chicago Blackhawks. They're just kind of, they're just here so they don't get fined kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like that's where they exist. Uh, Nashville, St. Louis, the same thing with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, they're just going to exist. They're going to be there. This might be, I, I think to me, this might be the worst division in hockey right now. There's just a whole bunch of teams that exist. And then you have your elites, Colorado, Dallas. I think Minnesota is elite. I just don't think they have enough weapons and enough tools to get past those two teams. Barring, I'm talking major injuries for Colorado. You're talking Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr being out for the, the year. You're talking about a Jake Ottinger and Jason Robertson injury for Dallas. Outside of those things happening and Minnesota being dynamite healthy, uh, this is a Colorado division to lose. It's almost like there's like an A class and a B class in this division. What do you got at? I have Dallas with the uh, plus 165 here. I like what I saw from them in the postseason, and I'm hoping that that carries over. Uh, I know uh, Jake Ottinger had a little tough time in that final series there, but he was really strong. Um, you got some nice uh, gameplay from, you know, Rupe Hintz who we look to see to take another step, uh, Wyatt Johnston as well. He's another guy that is uh, possible to, uh, you know, score a lot of those goals. And um, I don't know. I just, I feel really good about Dallas. I know Colorado has injuries to overcome as well um, from last season. And hopefully they can do that. Uh, I, I'm not shortchanging them at all. It's going to be a nice race between the two. And, you know, you look at Minnesota, uh, Chris mentioned Minnesota at plus 900. That that might be a little bit of money you might want to you know, slip in there with uh, Minnesota, just a little bit. So, Pat Maroon plays for that team, so do what you want with that information now. <laughs> yes, do what yeah. you want. Well, I, I may have to go look at the uh, Stanley Cup odds for the while now. But, uh, I'm just saying, that's, that, that's where he's playing, so. With, with the Central Division, it's very much Colorado and Dallas are their top tier. And then Minnesota's probably in a tier two by themselves. And then, like, you have Winnipeg, St. Louis, Nashville, then Chicago, Arizona, and the fourth tier, we'll call it. Colo Colorado's going to have Dallas snipping at their heels. They're going to be looking at them in the standings nightly. Dallas will keep it close. They will make them sweat. Colorado gets one key injury again this year. Dallas can absolutely overtake them. Now, as for the Wild, they're going to need help in terms of both Colorado and Dallas either struggling. They're going to have to leave the door open for them. And I don't know if both teams would leave the door open for them. But yes, they do have the mix to, that, that's capable of taking the Central Division. So there you go. Uh, we are uh, we got the I got the Avalanche at plus 150 on DK as well as Chris. Anthony likes the stars at plus 165 on points bet there. So uh, you can't really go wrong with either of those. You start to go outside those teams. Maybe maybe you're getting a little risky or if you want to just send me the money instead, you certainly can. Hey, one point separated both the Avalanche and the stars. And you look at the wild who were six points behind. Um, and that was probably before uh, Gustafson took off as goalie there. So uh, it could get a little tighter. Um, obviously, the scoring is going to probably be a problem, like uh, Christopher said, for the Wild. Uh, and, and it's obviously the classes, the Avalanche and the Stars there. So I, I think we are in line uh, to make a little bit of money, whether either team wins. Yeah, I think if you, either or, you, you give yourself a good chance there with the uh, Central with uh, Colorado or Dallas. Now, when we shift over to the other Western Conference division, we have the Pacific here. And uh, Edmonton, the favorite, at plus 195. Vegas, plus 240. Los Angeles, plus 400. The Flames, at plus 800. Seattle, falling back to plus 900 behind Calgary, despite making the, to the second round of the playoffs and giving the Stars a little bit of a fight last year. Uh, Vancouver, at plus 1,400. And then, if you couldn't tell by the fact that the Ducks and the Sharks are at plus 20,000, please do not. That that's not a long shot you want to put your money on. That, that that's not happening. You could have Edmonton, Vegas, and Los Angeles could all catch the flu and be out for the year, and Anaheim and San Jose still does not have a chance to leapfrog the three teams in front of them. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's about that's pretty accurate there. Yeah. Uh, no. The I mean again, no offense to the. Anaheim fans or San Jose fans is just a mail it in season kind of just show up let some kids play see if at least for the Ducks if the kids show you know if the kids show up if they can figure out how to give them some money then sure uh, for me I have the Vegas Golden Knights there a little bit of disrespect to the defending Stanley Cup champions 
Uh, I understand that this is the regular season, and I understand that it's, you know, McDavid uh, and Dreisaitl are going to drag the Oilers to wherever they need to be, regardless of what happens. Uh, but Vegas is still a very complete team. They're going to come into it this season as healthy as they can be, right? Uh, and that team was very deep to start with. They didn't really lose a ton. They didn't really add a ton either. They're kind of just a really good hockey team still. Uh, so I think they're they're perfectly fine. Uh, the Kings for me didn't cut it just because I don't think they can get past the Oilers. Uh, the Kings are a fun hockey team to watch. They add even more offensive punch to their lineup, which is great. I think that defensively, I don't know how the loss of Sean Dursey is going to hurt them. I don't know how Drew Doughty is going to perform. Uh, and definitely the the one question mark I really have is between Phoenix Copley and Cam Talbot. Uh, I, I don't trust uh, Talbot one bit. And Copley had really good numbers uh, in terms of wins and losses, but his outside overall numbers, goal saved above expected and everything, just quite average. So... To me, it's the Vegas Golden Knights. You can get them at 325 on points bet as well. So if you can shop around, do so. Uh, but the same thing here. I think this is a tighter race between the top three teams. I think anyone could take it. But barring, again, a major injury, which we cannot control, Vegas, to me, is the team that's going to be able to at least push and keep Edmonton as close to them as possible. I, I completely agree when you say it's a three man race at the top or a three team race at the top. I don't you nobody else, you know, Calgary, even if, you know, they are elated that uh, Sutter's out there, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Um, I, I think the Kings, uh, they could take the division similar situation with Minnesota where they're going to need both Vegas and Edmonton to deal with some either significant slumps or injuries. I, I give them a better chance at winning the Pacific than I do of Minnesota to overtaking Dallas or Cal or Colorado for the Central. I mean, if you look at last year's standings, um, 47, 25, and 10, they had 104 points. So they were five points behind Edmonton. Vegas won it, uh, had a two point cushion over Edmonton. So those two teams are pretty much right there. Um, LA is improved. Are, are they five points improved? We'll see what you said with the goaltending, because I agree. Phoenix Copley is not a legitimate long term solution. Maybe they're hoping they can get, you know, 60% workload of Talbot, 40% out of Copley. Maybe that's uh, hopefully the plan. But, uh, you know, that's the one area of the Kings that may be a little weak. I'm going to go chalk again. I think Edmonton, I think at some point, like, it, they just really need to put their big point boy pants on and just get some stuff to hang your hat on. Win a division, win some rounds. I think, they, like, it, it's got to happen soon. And, you know, I think Stuart Skinner will be a little bit better this year than he was last year. He'll hopefully take a step in the right direction. Who knows what they got in Jack Campbell at this point, if they ever even go back to him or how much of a chance they're going to give him. But nonetheless, I think there's, there's just Edmonton's one of those teams that will win a regular. They, they're just going to dominate in the regular season. That's what they do. They, they're a regular season champ. They fall on their face in the playoffs. We, we haven't talked about the Maple Leafs yet, but, but we can apply that to them as well. I mean, they have to play Anaheim and San Jose a bunch of times in their own division. So they're going to get to beat up on them a little bit. Got the uh, over in that game. Uh, anytime, right. And then yeah. they get to play Seattle a little bit. Uh, they should come back down to earth now that Martin Jones has left and all his bag of skills there. So uh, <laughs> there's some teams that that Edmonton and Vegas and Los Angeles can kind of beat up on here in this division. Not to mention they also get to play teams in the central. And there's a lot of those mid teams that you can beat up on as well. Uh, so it's going to come down to how many of those close games can they win against each other. Right. Those kind of games that are set that basically they become four point games right because if you take a two two steps front the other team takes two steps back you're in a good situation so yes i i don't disagree with anything you've said there yeah i can see why calgary uh leapfrogged seattle here it probably has to do with the goalie people have a lot more faith in markstrom than they do over grubauer i i would you know take a little bit put a little stash a little on on the crack and uh bouncing back into the playoffs again. I don't think they're going to win the division, but they're definitely, I think, a, a playoff team, especially, like you mentioned, they're going to have to play Anaheim a lot, San Jose a lot, uh, even Vancouver. Um, and who, who knows how really good Calgary is going to be. Is Huberdeau going to bounce back after that awful season? Who knows? Um, but I, I went with the plus 400 with the Kings. I know the goalie pro is a problem, uh, but I really do like 
their lines that they're they're coming out with. Um, I'm hoping for a full healthy season from Kevin Fiala. Uh, every time he was on ice, he was making moves and making ways and and scoring goals. And then he gets hurt every so often. So you know, I, I hope he can stay healthy. They got Pierre Luc Dubois there. Uh, Anze Kopitar and Kempe are are really good. And and like you said, Chris, the defense. Uh, I I really do like the defensive pairings that the Kings are putting out there. It's just the worry about the goalie and could the Kings, uh, if, if this goalie tandem doesn't work out between Copley and Talbot, could the Kings be a team that may be interested in a, uh, Connor Hellebuck? I hope so. Interested. Sure. Whether they want to, you know, pay the price that they're going to have to pay, especially considering, you know, New Jersey is going to be on on them. You know, there's going to be a team that we're not even thinking about that's going to have a goalie issue or, a, 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 you know, an injury at the position where they're going to all of a sudden throw their hat into the ring. So interest and willingness to, you know, pay for it are two different things. I don't know if they can. I think they're kind of built around the fact that we're going to have a strong top six. We have an all right bottom six. You know, the blue line's still pretty good. I know they lost Sean Dursey to Arizona. Brant Clark is a guy whose name comes up at the end of drafts. He's going to be a third pairing guy that's going to, you know, probably slowly but surely take over the power play responsibility, the top power play responsibilities from Dowdy. Um, so, I mean, that's more of an offensive guy. You can't count on him for defense too much at his age. Uh, so, I mean, there's reasons there for the, for the Kings to maybe weather a storm if Talbot and Copley don't play well. I just don't know if they're going to really go out and spend the capital to get a goalie unless they feel like they're that close. If, you know, Edmonton and Vegas are you not play up to level and, hey, the window is opening, great. But if Edmonton and Vegas are doing what they did last year, I don't know if I pay that to, to shore up goaltending unless I'm going to get, extend them. So problem number one, right, for L.A. is at the deadline, they're not going to have any money to operate, right? So Cap really has them at about $500,000 worth of cap space come deadline time. So that's... That's problem number one for for them, right? Problem number two is they may ask for a roster player plus a pick, and then you got to basically pay, right, a significant price. Uh, for a goalie, by the way, is, is like he wants to go somewhere and win. So he becomes a rental that, yes, you can keep. But like my assumption is like if if I'm going to move, if I'm going to move Hellebuck, right? Like if I'm Kevin Sheveldale, okay, I'll like, but I would like a pick. And I'm probably going to try to convince you that giving me Quentin Byfield is a good idea as well. Right? Yes. And, and I think that's a hard sell, at least for me, to be like, hey, this is a good idea to do. Because like both your goalies will be UFAs for at the end of the year, right? For the Kings, right? So whether you lose Copley or Talbot, or maybe you say, hey, you guys got to take Talbot the other way to make the money work. Sure. Whatever you got to do to make it happen. Sure. But there are players in that L.A. system that I don't know if I want to kind of let go. The Alex Turcotts of the world and stuff. I'm not like you. You could get into a conversation where, like if he says, hey, I want to sign a de- like sign a deal and then I'll and then we'll we'll make that trade kind of see if his agent can work something out. Fine. Then maybe it's plausible. But you're looking at a goalie who's probably going to want seven, eight years. He's he's going to want close to the money that he has earned, I think, in his book. So I don't think it would be crazy for him to look at whatever money Sergei Bobrovsky is making and saying, I'm better than Sergei, or I'm at the same level as Igor, or I'm at the same level as Vasilevsky and want that type of money. So the Kings need to move out a ton of salary to do so. And I don't see anybody willing to take Drew Doughty's egregious contract with them. Uh, and they also still have Kopitar on the books uh, at this point pretty high price you gave money to pierre luke dubois you gave money to kevin fiala there's just there's i, I don't see how they make this math work that's well, the, that that's the biggest issue with when you look at like the, the situation in pittsburgh where the penguins are clearly just they're throwing everything at the next year or two and then they'll worry about it on the back end the kings i think are more like all right we, we're doing something where we're going to be competitive even with our older guys the copadars and dowdies of the world but we're setting ourselves up for when they go down and retire, we're still going to be okay. They're in that situation right now. So I think they're, like you said, I think they're built to kind of just have... You would need a third team to get involved here. So we need one of those. You know, I don't think the Coyotes have any dead cap space left that they can use, but you need a third team to kind of eat some money from somebody to be able to make this deal work. 
kind of thing. And I mean, I don't like, I don't see Dowdy going anywhere. I don't see Kopitar moving there. No trade clause to go to, you know, whatever city they're going to that's not LA. So I don't know how they make all of this work. It would definitely need to be creative. Uh, and certain general managers are capable because we said the same thing about Eric Carlson going anywhere and boom, now he's in Pittsburgh with guys who make a ton of money too. So there's ways to do stuff, uh, but the smart math people are not me here. And I'm glad I'm not being tasked with having to come up with that idea. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe, go ahead. Maybe the Kings are just happy just getting into the playoffs. Obviously Edmonton and the Knights are, are you know, uh, the, the head of the class. And the Kings may be just happy getting in and hoping that they can pick one of these teams off. Uh, it's not a given that the Oilers are going to make it all the way. We've seen that year after year. Um, there's still the issues with the goalie. The Golden Knights are hoping that for a full season, they are going to get Thompson and Aiden Hill to be the guys, and especially Aiden Hill, to be the guy that he was in that Stanley Cup playoffs last season. I would not want to face them in the playoffs. I will say that. So what I do think, I, I don't believe that they just want to get there and kind of say, hey, like, hi, look at us. We made it here. I, I don't think you go to get Pierre-Luc Dubois just to say, hi, we've made it here, right? But I do believe that once they get there, like that center core is really, really good. And there are not many center cores in the NHL right now that match up to what they have. Like they have legitimately two top centerman who can play there, right? Kopitar and Dubois. And then you got Deneau, who it's almost ironic that he left Montreal because he didn't want to be a 3C, and now he finds himself in a 3C. The only benefit is, you know, the weather's nice, and I'm sure he lives by the beach, so he can digest it a lot better. But this is a team that down the middle can, can really just dominate you. And Kopitar and Dubois are not very small players. The Kings are a big hockey team. Like, once they get there, then there's trouble. And yeah. I, I I would not want to face them. Like that's the team I'd be like, hey, like you made it, sure, but I don't want to have to deal with you. No, yeah, yeah. That that was that was kind of more of my point. Maybe I I misspoke there, but that was maybe the Kings are okay not winning the division, but once they get to the playoffs, it's a whole different story. Considering you know the veterans they have, how tough they are to play. So that's kind of more in line of like what you were saying was, was what I was thinking. Maybe I. Misspoke right. there because Dude, even really? if they finish, like, think about it, they finish second or third in the division. Like, yeah. let's say they finish second. Well, okay, they'll have to take on Vegas or vice versa. Or let's say by miracle, Edmonton doesn't win their division. Well, then your first round matchup is like your, their first round matchup. If everything goes as it's supposed to, which is a big if, they'll have to play one of those teams in the first round. So, that like already, that's like for me, I feel like in this division, you want to win it. Right. Or sneak in as like a wild card or something and try to get away with whatever's going on here. Because if not, you're penciled in to face the, you know, you're either penciled in to face the Oilers, right, with the most dangerous hockey player in the world, or, oh, by the way, the defending Stanley Cup champions. That's, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of not fun, Gary. You know, the 1v8 would have been great, but here we are. And we talk about the King center depth. I mean, you look at Vegas, Eichel, Stevenson, Carlson, Nicholas Roy down the middle. So, like, yeah. you talk about center matchups being very important in the playoffs. I, it, it, the first round in the Pacific is going to be fun. I, I, I do wish they would go back to one to eight. That's a whole other podcast in terms of playoff seating. But, like, it, excellent point by you that whoever finishes third is going to have to go through one of those other two teams. And I think the Kings, I don't think they're scared of either of them. They're like, okay, great. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll finish where we finish and, you know, we'll, we'll see you at game one. You know, they've been close. It's not like they've been bad. They've been there. So like, I feel like they know that they can keep up. It is a task to have to slow down the Edmonton Oilers and that power play that just like there's there's no forgiveness there. <laughs> so if you take a penalty, you're done. And, you know, again, just to go back to the you know potential of Hellebuck being considered for there. It's all about the landscape, too. It all, you know. Like we said, injuries can affect things. If all of a sudden the West is wide open and the Kings are one of the best teams, now you're maybe motivated because let's face it, they're very familiar with a hockey play, a goalie carrying, not necessarily carrying them, but being a very big backbone to their championship run. They don't win a Stanley Cup if Jonathan Quick doesn't stand on his head throughout the playoffs in 2012 and then do it again in 2014. So, sure. you know, it, it, it it's not that far gone of a memory for them to be like, all right, if we can go get a goalie, we'll get it. But like you said, the cap gymnastics are going to need a lot of massaging. Now, we talked about the Central. We talked about the Pacific. Let's talk about the West in general. 
because uh, you know, like you like we were talking about there, the Kings maybe not a team you want to bet to win the division, but a team to w- get through the playoffs, sure. Uh, so let's take a look at the Western Conference championship odds. Colorado, no surprise there, is the favorite at plus four hundred. Edmonton plus five hundred. Vegas plus six hundred. Dallas plus seven. The Kings at plus nine fifty. Minnesota at plus a thousand. Now, a- after that point, yes, these teams probably have a chance. Maybe Calgary, if everything went right for them, at plus sixteen hundred. Seattle, I don't think is there yet. But hey, if as a long shot for a team that got to the second round last year, plus two thousand eight, bad. Pretty much anybody on the right side, you can wipe out right now. Uh, we can provide you reasons, but you know, hey, we try to keep this podcast to around an hour, so we're not going to do that right now on why the Ducks, Sharks, Coyotes, Blackhawks are not championship caliber teams. And not no knock on St. Louis or Nashville, but you, you you're not there either. Yeah, no, no, you're exactly right. That whole left side is what we are going to be dealing with uh, come postseason, uh, come playoffs, and uh, the right side is just just there. I mean, I mean, a case maybe could be made for the Jets if they're you know hovering mm-hmm. around and if they keep Halibut, but I, I, you know, I don't think so. I, I think you know Seattle definitely should have had a little bit more than than winnipeg there i would agree with that yeah i would i would especially with what we know with winnipeg gonna deal hella buck now last year uh the kraken had chris dreiger pretty much locked not necessarily locked in but the plan was for him to be the 1a he'll be back this year i mean i don't know what you think about chris dreiger and uh phil grubauer but you know you know i Martin Jones was fine last year, but Martin Jones is, you know, that, that that's the, that's all you, that, that uh, fruit has been squeezed dry of all of its juice at this point. Let me Martin tell you, Jones. I had, I had Martin Jones on my fantasy team and he had a wonderful January and completely fell apart. And I'm talking about mm-hmm. every night he was giving up five, six goals. And like, I had to just, I had to just drop him. I, I couldn't wait any longer. Um, Gru- Grubauer took over and got them to the second round. So I feel like uh, he's going to be that, you know, one a there uh, in net for Seattle. Uh, the, I was taking Dallas at the plus 700 here. And I, you know, you, you have Chris has Edmonton and I'm a little worried that if, you know, Edmonton faces, um, if Edmonton faces Dallas, you know, Dallas got picked apart by, the uh by the golden knights in those six games and they were scoring goals jake ottinger wasn't even you know in it for those games i mean it, they, they tore that that defense apart outside of was it Suter and and he's getting at the top line there i don't know how much i trust the rest and especially with that edmonton you know the the power play and all that i feel like they could pick apart the stars but I do have stars at plus 700. I am worried if they play Edmonton that that, that could be a problem. If Colorado is out of the way for some reason, then yeah, I like that because again, because of the way the playoff format is, it's not just about getting through the conference. It's you have to get through your divisional f- format first. So you just, you know, maybe you get lucky and you know, whoever finishes fourth in the Pacific and there's a wild card team all of a sudden just knocks out, you know, Vegas or Edmonton or get, gets rid of those teams in front of you. So I certainly like that play as a Dallas or Colorado coming out of the West for that reason, because the Pacific playoff bracket is going to be tougher than the Central, where we pretty much just assume at this point it's going to be Colorado, Dallas in the second round, barring a major, major something changing. Maybe Minnesota pulls off an upset. They could play Dallas close, you know, they, but we could see. Uh, so for me, looking at the West, I, you know, I, I got to look at. Me, the stars were a good one. Uh, plus 700 FanDuel, bet MGM, DK for all those reasons I described. Chris, I think you're leaning in a different direction, though. I am. I am going with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, Connor. We've been talking about the other one, Connor Bedard. Uh, and unfortunately, he plays for a team that doesn't matter. Uh, so, like, we know how competitive McDavid is. And I feel like when he just decides something's going to happen, he's going to do it. And you know he's a competitor. You know he wants to win. And I feel like he is not getting annoyed, but like you can see every time that they get eliminated, it's, it's the same conversation that they Any have. You can, yeah, and, and you can see as well as Dreisaitl, they're annoyed at this not like 
not getting to where they need to get. So I think a full year of Matthias Hackholm on the back end is going to stabilize that, right? He was a great addition there. That frees up space for Evan Bouchard to do what he needs to do. I'm assuming Darnell Nurse is just going to exist at this point and as long as he's not a liability, right? But again, I don't I don't even think that, you know, Edmonton is in the race for a goalie because they they've signed one and they have Stewart, but um, like if, if they have a chance to really upgrade their goaltending at some point, I feel like that's where they should be going here, right? They do have, so I feel like it would be easier to digest Stuart Skinner at his cost here. I don't think anybody's going to take Jack Campbell at his terrible deal. I can't imagine somebody eating Darnell Nurse's money in order to make it happen. But if I'm Edmonton, I have a chance to upgrade my goaltending because I, I really don't think it's Jack Campbell. Like, Sue is a great guy personality wise, but I mean, th- th- like, he plays on a team that is just like, there's no defense there. And, th- and that's by design. That team is not there to defend, they're there to score goals. Uh, and Campbell was very bad. So, if you get off to a mediocre start from your goaltending, you know, you're not going to be able to get past those teams in the West. You're not going to be able to get past Colorado. You're not going to be able to get past Vegas and Dallas and the Kings and the Wild. Those are all teams with better goaltending on paper, even the Kings, than how much I want to trust uh, Jack Campbell and Stuart Skinner. So if if I'm looking to upgrade, I'm doing it in goal. I, 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 I just don't see how they hang on to these two, especially if the start is mediocre, because you cannot just go into another year of saying, oh yeah, we've just gone through another year of McDavid and Dreisaitl, and what do we have to show is like, I don't know, a second round exit or something. Like they have the pieces in place, like make it happen, right? There's you can you can make it happen. There are teams that are willing for a pick that will eat some money and help you do whatever you need to do to exist. So, like this team can't be held back by Jack Campbell and Darnell Nurse's contracts. You can find a buyer for something. Those two are just a handicap right now because that's I mean that's almost fifteen mil on the books for below average performance. I'm not like. Darnell Nurse is 28. I don't know what, I don't know how, who he convinced, uh, but I need his agent on my next salary negotiation because they can convince uh, an igloo to buy snow. Uh, I, that, yes. So to me, I, I think Ed Edmonton is going to continue to upgrade this team. And I think that they're going to add, like they did at the deadline, maybe another piece on the back end because you can never have too many defensemen. And I'm, I'm hoping they do the same for their goaltending. I don't know if their top six needs any work. Their top six seems to be pretty fine. Their bottom six just has to like exist and not be a liability. And this team could be perfectly fine. They, they, they can at least have an opportunity to win their conference, but they need a little bit of help on that, on that back end, right? A little bit, yeah. but, but they need an upgrade in goal. So you're making that pick on the assumption that they will upgrade their goaltendings. They have to. They have no choice. Their 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 goaltending is not better than any of those than any of those teams. The only reason they're at plus five hundred is because McDavid and Dreisaitl will drive the pace, and that power play operates at just a ridiculous number. But that, those are all offensive numbers. But we saw that the like as good as Vegas was in just manhandling the Florida Panthers, like the Panthers were like a, a skeleton of themselves when they got to the end of there. They were just so beat up, they couldn't keep up. But Vegas was good defensively. In their first round against Winnipeg, like Winnipeg had a good team. And the Jets looked like they couldn't figure out how to play just basic hockey. They they won a game in a period, and that was it. Everything else after that, they were just not good. They didn't exist. So Vegas was able to get there based on the backbone of that strong defense and their goaltending. And then their offense just came together and played well. Like, I, I I don't think their offense was elite at any point, right? Like elite, elite when you think about it. But they were very capable of scoring goals when they needed to. And then they were led by strong goaltending and strong defense. And I think that's what the Oilers need. A full year of Matthias Eichholm is going to help, stabilizes everybody. But they still need to bring in somebody to just kind of, you know, clog up some minutes and play well. And, and then they need a goalie. And Edmonton's going to want to win within these next two years because uh, Leon Dreisaitl's contract is up. And obviously they could sign him, but he's going to cost a lot more than he did (laughs) eight years ago. I don't know if he's signing Leon Dreisaitl. How many $12 million players can you fit under a cap? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
And if, if they can fit McDavid and Dreisaitl under the cap, then the three of us are actually going to be line mates in Edmonton because that's what they're going to have to pay. So we could, we could. Uh, that that's without moving Darnell Nurse's contract, which I still can't believe he was able to convince somebody. Give us, get, uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, give us a call, uh, Ken Howland. Let us know we're here. All right, we're we're here. We're cheap. We'll uh, we'll give you a quality four to six minutes a night. You know, just just let us have it. And Chris yeah, is ready. He could get an assist. He talked right. about it. Look, I look. I give me the give me the Shane Wright treatment, like five minutes a night, and just you know, forty five second shifts. As long as I don't die or run into like Ryan Reeves or something, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I'm a defenseman by trade, but I'll go and dig the puck out of the corners and take the beating in front of the net. I'll go do all that work. Do I'm whatever fine I got to do to just exist. All I got to do. Here's how I learned it: just give the puck to McDavid and just move away. That's yeah. it. Just like keep it. Just and even if like. McDavid's so good, you can just kind of throw it in his vicinity and he'll go get it. So, like, you don't even have to make like a tape. To I don't tape even have to be close. Him. Yeah. I'm going to have to make a 30 foot pass, like foot pass in front of him so that he can slow down a little bit to catch up to it. Yeah. It's like that old football thing. You don't throw it where they are, you throw it where they're going. With McDavid, you got to really like lead him a little bit. Uh, and yeah, when you look at the Edmonton blue line, like, yeah, like the third pairing is nothing to write home about, but like come playoff time, you put most teams are just rotating, the, rotating those top two pairings anyway, and they're just playing the bottom pairing just to spell the top two pairings occasionally a period, you know, a couple times a period. So uh, we, we, we got we we're through the West here. Uh, so Chris is on Edmonton with the assumption that they are going to upgrade their goaltending because they have to. Uh, Anthony also on the Oilers. I'm going with the, the stars. I think if they can get provided that they can get by, if they get by Colorado, I like their chances of whoever comes. I know they lost to Vegas last year, but I think the road in the Pacific is going to be a lot tougher this year. And whoever comes out of that will be a little worse for wear than they were in 2020, the 2023 playoffs. Now we're talking the 2024 playoffs. Let's shift gears over to the Eastern conference. We will start in the uh, metropolitan division. Uh, my team and Anthony's team lie in this division. Uh, no surprise here. I don't think there's any uh, disagreement on the order of the teams. Carolina plus one six one sixty five, New Jersey at plus two thirty, the Rangers at plus four fifty, the Penguins at plus six fifty, Isles at plus twelve hundred, Caps at plus two thousand, Flyers at plus sixty six hundred. It's not happening. Columbus Blue Jackets plus eight thousand. Also not happening. But feel free to waste your money and place those bets. Um, so. Let's start. Uh, let's start with you, Chris. You're the one outsider on this division. Who do you got winning the uh, Metropolitan Division? I have gone with the New York Rangers. I have gone with the team that has the best goalie. Again, that is it's simple as it get there. I don't think Igor was bad in that last playoff round when he played against New Jersey. I think the rest of his team just decided they weren't going to show up, and all the guys that you went to go get, the Patrick Kanes and the you know the Vladimir Tarasenko's, they were good. But they didn't make a difference and they didn't do enough. I like DraftKings was running like one of those, like, you know, like those series, like pools kind of things. Right. And I had Igor as my captain. I still made a little bit of money, even though he didn't win because he was good. He was not the problem. The Carolina Hurricanes employ Freddie Anderson. And we know that his lower body is made of glass. So I don't know how long he's going to uh, be able to survive. I think that may be a problem. Yes, they have a lot of goalies in the system. Yes, they play a defense first, and they got a good offense. Uh, we know what the Devils bring to the table, which is just an absolute barrage of shots. Uh, they had I think, right their split squad game, uh, and in both games, they seem to dominate. So you could literally split this team in half, and you both, like if you had New Jersey Devils 1 and New Jersey Devils 2, they'd probably both make the playoffs because that's how deep they are at this point. But the Rangers, I think, to me, have the best overall team i like their defense the best i think they have guys who can produce right adam fox is there jacob truba barring suspension will continue to be there and you know be a force and again igor is the best goalie out of all those three teams like the two teams ahead of them he's still the best goalie so i i think the rangers are in a good spot there's no major injuries that they're dealing with i think if lafreniere and kako get their you know, stuff in order. Everybody wants to think that they can take a step. We keep talking about it happening, but if 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 those guys elevate their games and become the players that they are supposed to become, as we like to think, then this team is going to be just fine. I don't think that aspect of it gets talked about because, like, I'm a Ranger fan. I try to be reasonable and not let that affect my judgment on how I think they'll perform. 
I don't think they're in the mix for the division. That being said, if Lafreniere and Kako, like you said, start playing up to the pedigree or they find roles that work for them consistently, now that changes things. If all of a sudden that that gets going and now everybody starts to get cooking, you expect Fox to be better this year than last year. As he didn't have a bad year, but certainly he should. But hopefully, will be better than last year and get back to the previous season form. And you, they, not to say that the Rangers are necessarily a deep team, but they are well built with their top six and then their bottom six. I like the mix there. You know, we'll see what you know. You know, maybe Hedo moves into the top six and Trocheck moves down to the third line. We'll see what happens there. You know, they're trying. It's again, it's a new coach. We'll see what Peter Laviolette's going to do come once the season starts. But the like you said, the X factor there is Igor Shosturkin, and you got one of the best goalies on the planet. It's going to help you out. Now, for you also me, brought in Blake Wheeler, right? Like we we didn't even talk about him. Like, like uh, Blake, you Wheeler don't bring is, in Blake Wheeler to just say hi. How are you? You know. Now, I was talking with uh, Mr. Jared Moore about this, and he thinks Blake Wheeler is going to be a signing where it's like all he had was that much cap space, and that was the best we can do. So. I, you know, I agree. That's probably how it happened, but I do think Wheeler's going to come in with a chip on his shoulder and something to prove. And he doesn't have to be great. He just has to find his role in that top six across from Panarin or across from Kreider, whatever it's going to be on the opposite wing. All he's got to do is find make that role work. And I think he'll fit in just fine there. He is a guy that I'm all over taking in the last round of my best ball drafts. Absolutely. Because nobody's on him yet. So that's a guy, if you, if you are a best ball guy or even in a redraft league, for, you know, that's a guy you could throw as a late round pick that, you know, he might get you some production on the right yeah. side. So keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I am a fan of the top defensive pairing. I think Keandre Miller is going to take that next step as well. Um, Adam Fox, like you said, he's got to get back to what he did the previous year. Now, I got to ask you, do you feel, Adam, that this team did enough from where they finished last season in that devil series, do you feel like they've done enough to take that next next leap? Because, you know, Lafreniere and Kako, when is it going to be their time to shine? Like, when are we going to see them as their, those top picks take that next step? Well, I... I... Did they do enough to improve in terms of winning? No, I don't think because, I mean, all they really added was Wheeler and Nick Benino. So, I mean, yeah, they shored up their bottom six with Benino. But if those top two, if the if Laffey and Kako play closer to their pedigree, it changes the landscape entirely. So did they do enough? No, but I think they have what's necessary there to get to that level. I don't love the third pairing right now, Braden Scheider, Eric Gustafson. I mean, you're going to be playing the top two pairings more anyway. I mean, and that is a problem for the Rangers is that they aren't a great defensive team, but we'll see what LaViolette's got in store. And let's face it, when you have a guy like Shesterkin, you're a little more loose up front and you're not as concerned with defense because you know a guy that you got a guy that's going to bail you out more often than not. So uh, I, that, that's where I'm at with the Rangers. My pick for the division, as much as Carolina is the chalk, I, I got to go with the Devils here. Like you said, before Chris, you got a one A and a one B team could probably both get in the playoffs, even in a tough division. Uh, the Devils are a team on the rise. They added pieces in the right places. Now the goaltending is the weak spot. We all know that. It's every team's got one. That's the Devils, but they were able to get to the second round last year, despite that, and they're better. So, and again, if they get Hellebuck or not, it's a different story. They, and that also changes things too. But I just, I, I like the, it, What drives me nuts about the Devils is if their team was not the Devils, if they were the Winnipeg Jets, I would probably have a Winnipeg Jets hat. I am very excited to watch the Devils. I can't love watching the Devils, but I'm very excited to watch them this year. They're going to be a fun team. They're going to get a lot of points in the standings. They're going to score a lot of goals. If the goaltending could even be adequate, they'll go very far. Look, and it's not just. It's not just me being a homer here because I'm a Devils fan. Uh, the excitement level is really high, especially coming out of the last postseason. Uh, last, I keep saying post, the last playoffs uh, after beating the Rangers and you know uh, subsequently losing to the Hurricanes in those uh, five games. But one point separated the two teams, the Hurricanes and the Devils, and uh, you know Freddie Anderson. That's going to be tough to beat that three-headed monster that they have going on there with the goalies. But Freddie Anderson, if he can stay healthy, that's a thing. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how this 
goalie thing is going to end up with the Devils, whether they get Hellebuck, whether Kier Schmidt takes over, uh, whether Vanacek can bounce back from the you know abysmal showing he had at the playoffs. But uh, they're going to have to get that thing situated. Uh, probably won't have to be right now, probably be closer to the trade deadline. We'll know who's going to be in charge of that net. Um, so I, I do have the Devils at you know the plus 230 here. I am going to throw a little money at the Penguins, though, at that plus 650. I am going to throw a little bit of money their way. It's, it's kind of like that last run that they have going on there for them. Um, they did sign uh, Tristan Jari. I think it was a five-year deal. Five-year deal. Right? They just signed him to a five-year deal. They brought in Eric Carlson. I do like the lines that they're bringing out there, the defense. You got Graves, who was a devil. He's going to be a... Uh, well, as a daily face-off with Latang there at the top line, hopefully Latang can stay healthy. Uh, Car- Carlson in the whether he's in the second line or the top line, I think I even saw them uh, having Carlson and Latang on the top line, so that that would be interesting. But as Chris said, those lines really don't matter here in the pre in the preseason. Uh, we're going to get the best out of Crosby in his last run and and Malkin, so. I am going to throw a little little money Pittsburgh's way because, uh, you know, they have a better – I think that they have a better goalie than the Devils do right now. I think Jar, uh, if the Devils had Jari, we'd be talking a whole lot different uh, about the Devils. Maybe they, they would have the top line uh, on the odds. The Devils are projected to have $9 million about in cap space come deadline time. So They could get two hella bucks at that price. I'm just saying. For the remainder of the season. That's where he ends up. First round pick, couple prospects go the other way, and boom, you have yourself an elite goalie who, you know, how you sign him afterwards, you, you know, you figure that out when we get there. That's a whole other problem. But um, yeah, just I still, for now, I'm still giving my, as much as I don't want to, I think the Rangers are the better team. But I, I as you are, Adam, am excited to watch uh, the Devils when they don't play in Montreal. Before, don't get me wrong. We're, we're not really talking about Carolina here. I mean, when I say I like the Devils to take the division, it's going to be a one to two point cushion between Carolina and New Jersey. That's going to come down to the wire. So it it's, was not last a, year. it's not a disrespect on Carolina, you know, but it's just because they're goaltending. You know, you, you, it's Freddie Anderson. But like you said, the lower bo- half of his body is not always reliable in terms of health. That could maybe let the division slip away because the margin for error is that thin at the top of the Metropolitan. Pittsburgh won the division two. I'm more a fan of them for a little bit of a later discussion we're going to have today in the conference. You know, I could see them being a strong team, but just not quite being over the course of 82 games winning the division. But they're definitely a team I do not want. I I have no desire to see the Penguins in the playoffs at all. Is there any uh, any love for I guess the Islanders since they have Sorokin in net? No. Listen, they got a great goaltender. They're a team that can win on any given night. Can they make the playoffs? Absolutely, but they're not. Until we see them start producing more consistently on the offensive end, they're not a real threat. Yeah, they can probably shut you down, but I don't worry about them putting the puck in the net. I mean, they played Carolina tough for a little while last year in the playoffs, but eventually the cream roast at the top there. Very boring hockey team to watch. Boring hockey team to watch. They're like the devils of the 90s. They can put you to sleep. You can watch (laughs) that as you're trying to fall asleep if you're having a hard time, right? Maybe your doctor says, maybe try this medication and say, no, don't worry. I'll watch the New York Islanders play hockey. You will fall asleep easily. Uh, Yes, they have a great goalie. Defensively, they're fine. They're they're good. Uh, I'm just trying to look around and see who's going to score goals outside of, you know, Barzell and Horvat and even Horvat coming over didn't look uh didn't look elite didn't look like his 8.5 million dollar deal that he got so uh I just don't think they have enough power to get like you you're like they, if they want to win their division they're going to have to go through right that they have to beat Carolina the Devils the Rangers and the Penguins yeah I, I can't see it I, you know I would almost See, I could almost make an argument for Washington if everything went their way, having a better chance at the division than the Islanders just because they're capable of scoring. I think they're the third best team in New York. That's there you what go. I think they say. There you go. That's, 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 listen, that's the kind of analysis you get here on Better Hockey Now. I mean, that's what, that's what we're here for, folks. All right, so we switch gears from the Metro to the Atlantic Division. Now, of course, big news this week out of Tampa Bay. 
Andre Vasilevsky is going to be out a couple of months, needs some surgery. Uh, so on the screen right there, we were using the bet MGM odds. They were not changed yet as of the time of that graphic creation. But uh, DraftKings did update their odds to plus 800 to reflect that. The Leafs at plus 220, Bruins at plus 350, Florida are also there at plus 475. Uh, Buffalo is a dark horse at plus 900, maybe even Ottawa is plus 1100 as a dark horse. Detroit and Montreal, no, just no, not happening. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Look, Montreal is just here to participate this year again. They won't be as bad, <laughs> but they are still getting a participation trophy at the end of the year. Yes, they are, and they as they should, but they're just not going to be participating in the playoffs. That's all. Nope. They not even close. I'm sorry, Detroit. You might be you might be a fun, exciting team. You might be like a bad version of the Devils, where you're exciting to watch and you're fun, but you're just not going to the playoffs and going to win a lot. So, they keep sorry. adding players, right? The Iserman plan is to keep bringing in guys, but I never see their odds getting better. <laughs> Funny how that works, right? You would think they would go one way, they just stay the same. So we'll see. But uh, yeah, we look at those odds. And then for me, looking at the Atlantic division, uh, you know, it, yes, Toronto, Boston will probably take a step back with, you know, no Bergeron in town anymore. You know, that Vasilevsky, you know, you're still going to get 40 something starts out of him, regardless of the injury. So he'll still be there. Although the backup we had to look up for the show, Jonas, what was it? Jo- Jonas Johansson. Jonas Johansson. Okay. So he, he's going to be uh, holding the fort for a little bit. Maybe they go out and sign somebody or make a trade to get them through the first couple of months. But I like the Panthers uh, here uh, to take uh, the division as a potential dark horse. Um, and not even as a dark horse. I mean, they're the defending conference champions. It's just I don't think they get enough respect for what they are. Like you said, Chris, they ran out of steam last year because they were just so banged up. So I think this year, you know, with the additions of Evan Rodriguez, and I think they're just going to be, you know, the young guys will take another step this year. I think that they could probably get back to where they were two years ago in terms of being a regular season juggernaut and, you know, take the Atlantic away from a Toronto or a Boston or Tampa Bay that's on the decline. Uh, I, I mean, look, again, let's disregard most of the, the teams, right? Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit, Montreal. They're not winning a division. Um, I, I think the Panthers are interesting as just by what they showed us, but do I think they are a better regular season team than Toronto, Boston, Tampa Bay? No. And I don't think that they will have enough to get there, even with Boston and Tampa Bay regressing. I do believe that this may be Toronto's division to lose, uh, but they have proven that they can lose uh, considerably uh, for the last almost 50 years. Uh, so that's quite possible. For me, I'm taking Tampa Bay uh, because of the discount of the Vasilevsky injury, right? I'm getting him at what plus 800 on DraftKings, like that's right now. Yeah, like you're you're telling me that they're like without Vasilevsky, they go from a team that can compete to you know Buffalo Sabers kind of thing. Which again, no disrespect to the Buffalo Sabers, secret closet fan, but I I do not believe for a moment. Like like you said, we had to Google who is backing up for that team, and I understand that they can't go out and get a guy who's going to be there like for a while because the expectation is that Vasilevsky will comes back. But even when he does come back, right, these are back injuries for goalies. Like Vasilevsky's what, like six foot seven? Like this man's a giant. So obviously his body is built a little bit differently. And maybe all of this comes from, you know, the workload that he has to handle. Like he plays a lot of hockey. So I do not believe for a moment that Tampa Bay is not going to try to go out and get a goalie, a goalie on an expiring deal that is willing to at least maybe 50-50 decrease at this point. So my idea when I first heard was this, was like, well, why wouldn't Marc-Andre Fleury you know, wave his no-trade clause and say, hey, if I want to win another Stanley Cup, do I have a better chance of doing it in Minnesota or do I have a better chance of doing it in Tampa Bay? You don't have to bring your whole, right? First of all, you can easily convince a kid from Quebec to move to South, right, to Florida. That's not a hard selling point there in terms of taxes as well. Chris? I'm just saying yeah. there's a lot of us down there, right? If you, if, if, if you walk on the beach, there's a lot of French, right? So when we go down there, we're trying to avoid those people and then we just realize it's just, you know, it's just little Montreal just where there's beaches and palm trees and stuff like that. So you can easily convince Fleur and say, hey, look, you can be in Minnesota if you want. I don't know how much he's going to play there because Philip Gustafson is a better goalie. And yes, you know, Andre Vasilevsky, that's his net. 
But if I'm Tampa Bay, I don't want to, you know, run him into the ground when he comes back. So maybe I need somebody who is who has rings on his finger, who understands the role at his age as well and can still contribute. And he can. That's like the fact of the matter is, is that he can. He's not a starter anymore. Obviously, Tampa Bay has to make this money work because they have no cap space. But if I've learned anything from Julian Brisewa and the Tampa Bay Lightning is that they can easily do cap gymnastics uh, to fit everybody under. The goal is to get to the playoffs and all of a sudden everybody becomes healthy when they get there. They all get like the magic spray from or the magic water bottle from Space Jam or the spray that they have in soccer. Then they're magically healed. Every injury that they had that kept out, you know, the player for six months, all of a sudden they're fine. So. I right, like even when he comes back, Vasilevsky, I still don't think they need to run him in there. And you're not going to win very many games with Jonas Johansson and goal or whoever else they're going to plug in there. So you have to be competitive until Vasilevsky comes back. And even then, you may want to reduce his workload a little bit and say, hey, man, look, like let's make sure that the splits here are good. A lot of teams have two good goalies now, and there's a reason for that. And I think this is one here. So I don't, and so especially at a discount of plus 800. My theory again is that there's no way Tampa Bay says, yes, Jonas Johansson is the guy who's going out here. We got one more year left of Steven Stamkos, and then they've signed a whole bunch of guys to long-term deals, right? The cores of this team, they're not like just going to fade away into the sunset here. This is a team that wants to win. And especially with the Boston Bruins looking as the team that's going to regress and Toronto being Toronto, there's no reason to believe that Tampa Bay cannot win a division here. So if I'm getting them at a crazy discount, I want to buy that discount now with the expectation that there's a goalie coming between today and whenever, you know, Vasilevsky is healthy again, assuming he's even healthy and, you know, before April, because I don't know. Tampa at plus 800 right now. Like that, you just go sprinkle a little on that as uh, Howard Bender would say, go sprinkle a little on that because for all the reasons you just said, like, and again, it's not going to, it's two months. He is going to be back before Christmas, sometime after Thanksgiving and before Christmas. And one thing I've noticed is sometimes they pad these timelines a little bit because I feel like more and more, like if it's six to eight weeks, it tends to be more six to seven to weeks. You know, these guys want to get back. They're motivated. So they're not going to rush him back, but you know, maybe he's back before Thanksgiving, you know, you don't So it's really going to be, the month of October, probably November, he's going to be back early mid December, and you still have January, February, March after that. So you still got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, runway left on the season. Uh, my Panthers pick, yes. by the way, plus six hundred on Caesars. But Ant, you've got a pick with even uh, longer odds that you like here. You said the dark horse. I'm going with the Buffalo Sabers plus yeah. nine hundred. It's not always about. You know who the team, obviously we know Toronto is, you know, the top of the heap there. I think Boston takes a step back. I'll get to Tampa in a second. You mentioned Florida too. All, we, all those teams are the top of the heap, but plus 900 for Buffalo. Uh, Christopher always talks about how he is going to be drafting Devin Levi in goal and net. And that's a guy we should be looking out for. Uh, obviously this team, I think is pretty stacked uh, to me uh, at the top. Let me go all the way to. There we go. Jeff Skinner, Tage Thompson, Alice Tuck, who I got in my uh, fantasy draft in our best ball. Uh, Dylan Cousins, uh, you know, you can go to defense. Rasmus Dahlin, Owen Power. I do like these guys at the plus 900. It doesn't mean that they're going to win, but I will sprinkle that money there. This injury to Vasilevsky is ha- probably has better uh, betters, you know, drooling at the mouth now at this plus 800 uh, for Tampa, I mean, like you mentioned, it, you know, it's you know, you lose him for the two months. If this team can hover around that final playoff spot, just get them to a point where when Vasilevsky comes back, and he's not going to come back and just be playing every day, he's they're going to groove, they're going to you know groom him back into that role at, at, in net to be the top uh, goalie, but get him back a hundred percent. And this team will have, what, what did you say it was? It was December, what, three months? Two uh, two months is what they're saying. So two, yeah, months, you, two, yeah. two months he's out for, but then you got three months of him coming back. Uh, you can't go wrong at plus 800 with Tampa. So I, I would be sprinkling money there. Everyone should be. It, yeah. It's a disservice if you're not. And listen, you know, people won't be like, oh, Buffalo's not going to win the division with Toronto and Boston or, or Florida. Listen, you know, why not? Like, it, it, they're going to be a fun, exciting team, and that doesn't always translate to wins. But they would, 
from the look on the ice last year, they were absolutely heading in that direction. I think they do move up in the standings this year. Where that is, I don't know. But if Devin Levi comes out and is this young hotshot goalie that just shuts down the world, and they have the mix, they have a high power top six. Jack Quinn, who's going to be coming back from Achilles surgery, probably not till we flip the calendars, and they're not going to rush him back either. But hey, even if you got him in February, it's like a, you know, not to use the uh, overused expression, but it's like adding somebody at the trade deadline from your own roster. You know, even if they wait that long, you get that like little surge in the roster. Again, it's going to take Toronto having major issues, but it's going to take some help. But it's, you know, you know, it's not a bad, it's not a bad play. They just throw a little on it and see, see what happens. You never know. Buffalo First, uh, missed the playoffs by one point yeah. last season. Okay. And they employed Craig Anderson. Yes. So I, I mean, again, I understand it's tough for rookie goalies. I've been talking about Levi now for the better part. Every time I see an article talking about a sleeper, I was like, yeah, nobody is asleep anymore because we've already heard this. Everybody's listening to this, and we already know that. We, we've discovered that. We found the quarter in the couch, and we've already bought you know a gumball, and we've already enjoyed it while everybody else is still trying to find change to get him. Like We know. So even if he, he, he doesn't have to be great, he just has to be better than Craig Anderson. That's a really low bar for him to set. So I think that he can. And if he does, then yes, he can easily be one of the better goalies. I think truly, I believe that if I'm not betting on Connor Bedard to win rookie of the year, then I'm betting Devon Levi. Because if he is good, he doesn't even have to be elite. If he is just good, like a sub 250 goals against average, a 920 save percentage for a rookie goalie in the NHL, like that is extremely hard considering the position that he plays. Now, if Bedard goes out, has a hundred points, then you know that's a whole other question. But what Levi can do for the Buffalo Sabers, he can easily shoot them up the ladder pretty quick. Now we'll talk awards futures on the next one, uh, next episode here of Better Hockey Now. But that that that's a little early preview right there for the Calder. Maybe you throw some on Levi because. Bedard is going to, there's going to be no sense in placing any money on Bedard because he's going to be the odds on favorite and it's just, it's not going to be close. But just like chicks dig the long ball in baseball, hot goalies, flag, flashy goalies that are making all these crazy saves. Bedard can just be producing at a high pace, but it's like, that's expected. This is like yes. the, you know, th this is going to be the new flash in the pan kind of thing where it's like he might steal it from him if he plays like that for the duration of the season. So we, uh, we, we've we talked uh, a little bit of Atlantic. We talked a little Metro. It is uh, time to get to the Eastern Conference here before we get the Stanley Cup champions here on Better Hockey Now on the Better Sports Network uh, So and Fantasy Alarm. Uh, the Eastern Conference updated odds there for Tampa Bay. They were still listed at plus 750 on FanDuel. Uh, it is now plus 1,200 at Caesars and plus 950 on DK. So Caesars is basically putting them somewhere between the Panthers and the Sabres. Uh, you know, again, you know, you look on the right side, you know, you could probably rule out these bottom seven teams right here. You know, if Buffalo could win the division, why couldn't they make a run at the East? I don't know if I would go that far with them this year. In terms of the Eastern Conference, two teams I'm looking at is a Carolina to get there this year uh, after they missed out last year. I can certainly see them taking care of business and getting there, even though I have the Devils winning the division. division winners doesn't necessarily mean conference champions. The other team, which if you've watched the last few better hockey now, as you know, I'm very in on the Penguins after the offseason they had with the additions they have made. So while I don't think they would win the division, I do think that uh, in terms of making a deep run in the conference right now, a plus uh, 950, I'll gladly play some money on that, and I'm going to play some money on that shortly after we finish recording here today. Yeah, placing money on the Penguins at the 950, as well as uh, the Lightning on, was it Caesars has them at 1,200? Uh, that's, a, again, like we were talking about the division. You're going to want to sprinkle some stuff on that. Uh, I I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm liking the Devils at plus 600. I, if this team is healthy and stays healthy for a full season, and they get this definitive goalie in net, which uh, we've talked about them having the cap space for. I'm going to take that plus 600 with the New Jersey Devils. It's probably a sound bet. I, I mean, it, it's it's tough to argue against the Devils making a run and making a run all the way to the finals this year with the makeup they have. I think they maybe need one more year of seasoning to get to that point, but it's 
if they don't get there this year, it's not because of lack of talent. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm 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 right behind Anthony at the window to place the bet there on the Devils. Uh, I I do think that they're going to be they're going to go out and get a goalie. So my expectation is is that it won't be whoever is going to claim the number one job out of camp. It'll like hopefully it's it's Connor Hellebuck, right? That's who should be there. That's the expectation, and I think that number has a little bit of it in there uh, because I mean does. Do the Devils really have a better goalie than Tampa Bay, Boston, or the Rangers and Pittsburgh? No, but they're expecting that somebody will. I do think that their forward group is good enough. I think they have enough seasoning there. I, I think they've, you know, the cayenne pepper, the paprika, the salt, the pepper, it's all there. They went out. They've got guys who have who have been able to win. You bring in Tyler Toffoli because he he's, you know, he can win and he already has. You bring in guys like Timo Meyer. Yes, they're a little bit older. It's not his fault he played in San Jose, but these are guys who have been there who can win. So I think they have a good mix. Bringing in somebody like Connor Hellebuck, elite goaltending, no Stanley Cup on his finger yet, but I I, I do believe that he can he can help this team, this Devils team, get to the conference final. And so to me, I'm kind of kind of a little bit just hedging my New York Rangers bet here. Uh, because like you said, just because you win, you know, the division doesn't mean you're going all the way to the top. Um, so I would take the devils, but yes, I would also sprinkle a little bit on Tampa Bay. If I'm going to get a crazy discount like that, because Vasilevsky misses two months, let's say three just for fun. Uh, but if the Tampa Bay lightning are right there, all they got to do is make the playoffs, right? The Florida Panthers reminded us that you just have to make the playoffs and whatever happens after that happens. Uh, so if I'm going to get a discount on something, uh, that may not matter at that point once you make the playoffs. Sure. And now because I mentioned Florida before as the, uh, who, a team, I think that could take the Atlantic. They can win the Atlantic. And like you just said, they went through the, you know, the Bruins and the Maple. They went through everybody. No problem last year. There's no reason they couldn't do it again. So uh, listen, the Panthers are plus 1100. Also something that I would me personally, I'm, I'm probably going to play something on here. Uh, so you know, we, we got the Devils here at plus 600. We talked about the Lightning. Uh, you know, you t- mentioned the Rangers win division and the Penguins and the Panthers. We haven't really talked a lot about the Bruins today. Um, are, we, are, we, are we writing them off too soon? Is that appropriate? I mean, obviously, they're, a good, they're still going to be a good team without Bergeron. They're still going to probably, they're going to be a playoff team. But are we just, uh, you know, the fact that we have not talked about them at all and the Bruins are the Bruins and they did what they did last year. You know, are, are we uh, just ignoring them a little too much here? The Bruins literally had the best season and didn't get out of the first round. No. And now I can't expect them to now go and win the Eastern Conference after a couple of retirements from some of their biggest players. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I think they're a team. I think a, with Vasilevsky's back hurt, I think he could take care of the Bruins. Uh, that's just me. I don't even have the Bruins making the playoffs. I'm going to be straight up. Wow. Uh, that Atlantic division is better. Let's assume for a minute the Iserman plan works a little bit and they will at least be competitive, the Detroit Red Wings. We've written off the Washington Capitals completely as well, uh, but they did go out and get pieces, right? They went out to get Max Patch ready to bring in some go- some more goal scoring for a team. A healthy John Carlson. We'll see what Darcy Kemper can can do, but like the Boston Bruins have take have have regressed here, right? Say what you want about whatever Dmitry Orlov did when he showed up, and he was elite, and now he's gone. And I mean, again, depth players like Garrett Hathaway. I understand they don't turn the clock, but he came in and he was really good. You no longer have Taylor Hall. Whatever that value is for, fine. They don't have Nick Felino. Whatever that value is for. But you are not replacing like Patrice Bergeron. You can't. You can't do it. The man, for the first time in forever, like we don't know who's winning a Selkie because Patrice Bergeron's not in the league. And at some point, that trophy is going to be named after him because he was the example of what that trophy represented. He could play five on five, five on four, four on five. He, he, he could play every situation needed. This man was on Team Canada because you knew that when you needed a faceoff, he was going to win it. Like, it's not Pavel Zaka that's going to do this. The Bruins are extremely weak down the middle, right? James Van Riemsdyk is on a top line, and it's, you know, we're going into 2024. 
Uh, this team is not like it's not great. So I don't know why people think that the Boston Bruins are going to be a good team. Like they were historically good, and now they may be historically bad. I get that Pasta's there, and he he's going to fill the net. He is, and Jake DeBrusque and all those guys. But when push comes to shove in that Atlantic division, like are they better than the Toronto Maple Leafs? No, they are not. And I do not, but I, I believe that the Buffalo Sabres can make the playoffs and not just as a wild card team. So, like, where, like, where are the Bruins going to get it? I have, to, I, I would have Tampa Bay ahead of Boston right there. So for me, I, I, I believe that if the Sabres can take a spot, that means the Bruins are in a wild card position, and there are too many good teams in the Metro, right? Mm -hmm. for Boston to take over one of those spots. This could be a situation where we see five teams from the Metro make it and three teams from the Atlantic just because the Atlantic is there and they, you know, they house the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, And again, yes, I understand the New York Islanders. They they don't exist. And, you know, the Blue Jackets and the Flyers and whatnot. Sure. But the Boston Bruins are not on paper. They are not a very good team. So if I had the opportunity to bet them to not make the playoffs, I would happily smash away. Uh, maybe not the whole mortgage, uh, maybe just like, I don't know, a couple of cartons of eggs, maybe two eggs. Uh, I mean, depending on the prices of eggs, depending on the market. Correct, right? That's that's where I would go with the, Bos- with, with the Boston Bruins right now. I do not think they are a playoff team. Not today. Not with that lineup that they're rostering. And, you know, no offense to Pavel Zaka. I got to see him firsthand for most of his career, lingering around the third and fourth line, not living up to... Uh, his first round pick, you know, status. And obviously he's going to be sandwiched between, you know, two of the best in Brad Marchand and, and David Pasternak. But, you know, is he ready? Is he ready for that assignment? Is he ready for that hype that comes along? New Jersey is different than Boston, you know, and it's a whole different feel uh, for hockey over there. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about him taking that top line center role, uh, I just don't. I just don't see it. I, I'm with Chris. I, I I don't see it for Boston this year. Pavel Zaka, Charlie Coyle, Morgan Geeky, Jesper Boyquiz. That's your center core down the middle. Some teams have Kopitar, Dano, and Pierre Luc Dubois. Other teams have Zaka, Coyle, and Geeky. They are not the same. So. Fair enough. The, we'll expect the Bruins to be in the wild card mix or entirely out of the playoffs. We'll see how that goes for them this year. Now, we've gone through all four divisions. We've gone through all the, co- the two conferences. It means it's time to pick a Stanley Cup champion. Let's take a look at the updated odds here, courtesy of FanDuel. Uh, there you go. I'm not going to read them all off, but, you know, Colorado a plus 850, Carolina at 900 are your t- top two favorites. Then you get into the Torontos, Edmontons, and New Jerseys of the world at plus 11. Vegas and Dallas plus 13. Boston, we talked about that, you know, they're still getting a lot of respect because they're considered on par with the Rangers and the Lightning here at plus 1700. Uh, and then you go a little further down the list, you got the Kings, Panthers, and Penguins. Uh, and then after that, it probably gets a little dicey as much as we love Buffalo to make the playoffs. Don't necessarily see them as championship contenders yet. Same thing for Minnesota. So that line pretty much gets cut off there between Pittsburgh and Minnesota. So without further ado, championship bet time. Anthony, who you got first? Who you got? This is tough, man. I this again. It's I feel like I'm sprinkling money everywhere. But I mean, you you got to maximize your opportunities to win. So that's what we're trying to do. I I really do like the plus eleven hundred for the Devils. I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with being a homer for the Devils this year. It really isn't. It's not like oh, okay, yeah, sure. We we get it. We get how good they are. We understand this. I'm envious and, that you can actually like fully back your team that way and have yeah. some confidence with it. I would love to back the Rangers that much, and they have it in them to be that good. Just last year has got me a little snake bit. That's all. And, and we know that if they do get Connor Hellebuck or whatever goalie they get, right, that number is going to go down, right? Yeah. If you don't make the bet now, the number is going to go down. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to go with the Devils. Obviously, I will sprinkle some money towards the Lightning and even the Kings. Maybe even a little bit on the Minnesota Wild at plus three thousand. Just you know, just 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 a little, just a little sprinkle. One question that I have for you guys is: you got the Maple Leaves and the Oilers at plus eleven hundred each. Which Canadian team are you taking for that plus eleven hundred? It's the Oilers. Oilers. 
It's uh, not to say it's an easy path, but it's an easier path than the East for sure, because both the Metro and the Atlantic are going to be dogfights the first two rounds, and then they get to play. The, the two winners get to go and have a fight with each other. Yeah. I think if Edmonton survives that first round against a Vegas LA team, and now you're getting the leftover, you know, I, yeah, they get through their division. You know, at that point, you, you wonder who, what's left of Colorado or Dallas for that following round. So, you know what I say? What about that plus 4,000 for the Senators? What do we think of that? No. I, if, if it's going to be plus 4,000, I'll throw my money on Buffalo before Ottawa. I think I, Ottawa to make the playoffs this year wouldn't necessarily be a bad bet if they can because they could sneak in on I, paper I, a, if, if they had good goaltending they'd be ahead of the boston Bruins. and, and look, hollow is not cutting it there you guys are more in tune with the you know the betting aspect i'm just getting into it are there just to make the playoff bets for oh these yeah well? sure okay. if we wanted Fun. to do like a three-hour show we could have done that so <laughs> i left that out but you know feel for listen and we'll do, you know, hit us up on Twitter or in the comments if you've got, you know, bets you're playing that you're confident in or, you know, to make the playoffs, not make the playoffs. Or do we we want to hear about them. We, we want to know. We want to talk about it. So you can DM me that. directly, Bruins fans, and tell me which med I'm off uh, and I'll accept it. I promise. And with Chris, the beauty of part about, you know, arguing with Chris is you always have the trump card of, you know, bone wings are better than bone lists. So you always have that trump. So even if Chris is winning the argument in terms of hockey. That's like the draw four card right there. So there you go. Chris is making enemies in Toronto and Boston. Uh, He's got the Islanders on his on his heels. Everywhere on the East. That's right. The ten Islander fans that are left, they can (laughs) also uh, hate on it. But no, I I would take yes. I I would say the Ottawa Senators. The Ottawa Senators are a good team, or at least management thinks they are. Uh, They have players in place to do things. So I would expect them to at least compete. Are they winning a Stanley Cup? No. Uh, for me, it's just that Edmonton has uh, Connor McDavid. And I know this might be hard for Leafs Nation to remember, uh, but Connor McDavid is the best player on this planet uh, in terms of goal scoring, in terms of assists, in terms of skating, in terms of any other metric that you want, with maybe the exception of like pure goal scoring release, which I think maybe uh, Austin Matthews is better at, right? Just a pure goal scorer. Uh, but like, McDavid is a a better in every every aspect. I'm sure I'm sure McDavid grows a better mustache as well uh, than Matthews. So if I had to pick between those two 1100 teams, that's that's where I'm going. I'm not trusting the team that's made it out of the first round for like you know one time in 20 years here. I mean, I, I might have to. I think Matthews might grow a better playoff beard than McDavid, but we'll, I guess we'll have to see. I get neither one has really gone deep enough into the playoffs for to properly evaluate that. So that's really on them more than anything. So see what happens there. Now, just to get a couple other uh, championship picks out there that we like, you know, I think I, I was big on Carolina last year and they let me down against Florida. Um, I, they just ran into a team that was just hot and they had the hot goaltending and they were getting all the bounces. I don't, I, I have the devils to win the division. But I do think Carolina coming out of the East at plus what here nine hundred. Uh, you know, I got them up. You, you can see them at plus eleven hundred on points bet. You know, get a little bit uh, you know better odds there. Uh, you know, for me, that's the play. Uh, I we've already talked about how much I like Pittsburgh. So you know, at plus three, I, I got them at plus three thousand on Caesars here. They're at plus twenty two hundred. And then because I had the stars coming out of the West, got to throw them in here. Uh, I got uh, plus eighteen hundred on Caesars. Uh, here they're at plus thirteen hundred on FanDuel. So those are three picks I like for the Stanley Cup there. And a confidence pool, it would be Carolina, Pittsburgh, Dallas, one, two, three. So that, that those are my picks for a Stanley Cup. And again, that doesn't mean I don't think other teams are capable, but that's just where I find the best balance of my wor- worth placing a bet versus realistically happening. So uh, Chris, I think you and I see eye to eye in at least one of those. Yeah, I have Dallas as well. Dallas to me, I feel like the lineup is the deepest. So in the playoffs, right, obviously players deal with injuries and stuff like that. Dallas has the most depth, so they could survive potentially anything. Those, you know, those bruises um, and those aches and pains. Uh, they also have, to me, I think, out of the West, the best goalie, right, in okay. Jake Ottinger. So yeah. that probably helps. I've, we've seen the good in Jake. We've seen the bad in Jake. Uh, maybe we see the good again. Uh, and defensively, I think that that defense is like more than capable of keeping up and playing well. 
uh, as of today. And I'm expecting them to add more players out in the East. Uh, I will. Con- I guess I will continue to remind Anthony that his team is good because I have also backed the New Jersey Devils with the assumption that their goaltending will get better. Uh, maybe they add a couple of pieces on their blue line just because, you know, why not? You know, it's that time of year for them. Uh, but this is a team that has, again, they are deep up front, right? When you add Tyler to Foley to an already very good team, uh, you know, when you have a full year of Timo Meyer, this team is going to be fun up and down the ice shooting i mean lindy seems to be having a good time i'm old enough to remember when you know devil fans were chanting to have him fired and mm-hmm. now all of a sudden uh he is perfectly capable he's been healed uh so this is going to be a fun team to watch go up and down the ice dougie hamilton on that back you know on that back end is going to just going to do great another hughes brother on the blue line is exactly what this team needed because why not uh and then like i said if if that goaltending gets figured out you basically have a a very complete hockey team. And I, I think if they had to go up against the Rangers again, I, I, I think they would come out of it again. Having just based every, we haven't seen the Rangers yet with the new, with Laviolette, but just based on everything we know up to this point, I would agree with that for sure. It's, now, I- annoying watching the devils be this good it's it's i'm still in the excited phase it hasn't annoyed me yet trust me it will annoy me maybe not as much as you know other things but that that will annoy eventually it'll go from this is fun to watch like oh yeah it's at the expense of my team in the division and their placement so that'll eventually settle in so and what do you got here to wrap up with any other uh, championship picks you got for us here I also like Dallas at uh plus uh, 1300 because everything that Chris just said they're the most complete and you need a really good goalie. Ottinger is a really, really good goalie. Uh, I think he's top five. I, I think he's even top five in uh, fantasy rankings. For sure. Yeah. Um. So they're going to get a lot of wins this season, and I think that they are going. They were what two games away, two games away from making it to the Stanley Cup, and they just ran into a very hot Aiden Hill. And so <laughs> I, I think that cast, Dallas too. is the team. And let's that not forget the year before what they did against Calgary, right? That's when Jake Ottinger really reminded the world that he was, you know, that he was him, that he was that guy. Uh, so I don't think he's lost that yet. When you're trying to evaluate Colorado versus Dallas, Col- you know, Colorado's definitely got a much deeper blue line. Dallas has better goaltending, and I would, I, you know, Colorado's got a fantastic top six, but Dallas's depth is better than Colorado's as far as I'm concerned, and in the playoffs, depth matters, so... Colorado, well, Colorado's Colorado's blue yeah. line is the best, though. Like the, the, we understand Colorado, how great they are. Yeah, the Colorado Adam, blue line is second to none. Adam, mm-hmm. you witnessed uh, Georgiev in net, so you know it, I, 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 he's a very good goalie. And on a team like Colorado, he's going to be. Listen, he's still uh, even if you put him on another team besides Colorado, he's still a very good goalie. But Colorado does not need a w- tier one goalie. They are fine with a, a, an upper tier two goalie, and that's what they got. Whereas Adinger, I would th- say, is probably more the bottom of the tier one. So that that's my comparison there in terms of they you know, want a Stanley Cup with Darcy Kemper in goal. Just correct. Yeah. Remember that. <laughs> so there we go. That'll do it for our NHL futures uh, preview here for the divisions, conferences, all that stuff. And you know, we didn't talk any fantasy today, but we've been talking plenty of fantasy here over the last couple of months with our mock drafts. And as you prepare for your drafts, go out and get the fantasy alarm. NHL draft guide just came out. Uh, one of the people on this uh, podcast here has contributed to it, Mr. Uh, Christopher Morez below me. And also Andrew, Andrew Duhurst that was here last week for our uh, best ball mock draft. He's got his uh, insights and thoughts in there too. So please, if you're doing your hockey drafts, fantasyalarm.com. Go ahead and check out uh, the NHL draft guide there, and that'll certainly help you. I know I've got, I've lost track, probably about eight drafts, maybe 10 over the next two weeks. So I will be diving into that for sure. Hey, now, Chris's right. article helped me out during our best ball draft. So help me out with a couple picks. There you go. And Levi is in there in case anybody yeah. was confused where my Alliance leads, <laughs> but yes, the same thing as well. Sleeper article. Uh, I was fortunate enough to put that together. Sleeper as always, people like to throw that term around. So I base it off of ADP fun fact. When I put that together, uh, ESPN had uh, Devin Levi ranked outside of the top 300 at that point. I think it was just, we had put it together midway through. September. Wow. Uh, so things have changed, obviously, but uh, again, if like because you read and because you listen, uh, you are not shocked when somebody writes about 
Bevon Levi anymore. And there's lots of other great best ball things. And a lot of right strategies for that are different. A lot of great strategies on just, you know, sleepers, players who are going farther than their average draft position. Just keep them in mind. I'm not saying they're going to, you know, I, I always tell people you cannot win your draft on draft, like, like your league on draft night, but you most certainly can lose it. So do not put yourself behind the eight ball to start the year. At least put yourself in a position to win. Devon Levi outside the top 300. Wow. There I couldn't go. believe it either. I was looking, I scrolled so long because I thought I missed him. I was, I was looking in the 100s and then I had to literally manually type in his name. Uh, and that's when he popped up. And then I was confused. I thought maybe it was an error. Maybe, maybe it was like another Devon Levi, like Devon Levi Sr. And that was not the case. It was indeed the Devon Levi that I was looking for. No bueno on that. So you know you're going to be getting at least some more updated rankings over a Fantasy Alarm versus some of the bigger uh, providers there. Now, we usually try to end on a good note. I didn't really have a topic for today, but I am going to assign some homework out. Anthony, you go to Devil's Games fairly often. I want you to let me know the first time you see a Devil's jersey with Hellebuck on the back. That's what I want. Oh, yeah. Is you going to see that night one on opening night? Is that more of like a November thing? But the first time you see that, I want to know. I will take picture a picture of it. it. We're going to get a picture and we're going to post that on the show. I will be at the stadium series. We have talked about this, you know, off air. So I'm very excited uh, to go to this uh, event. It's it's an, it is an event. Uh, it's not just the game. There's it's a, whole, a, game. It's a whole event. lot of stuff going it's an on. Event. So very excited for the uh, Devils and Flyers at uh, MetLife. Which will be part of a what? what uh, is it back to back days, or if there may be a day between, but then the Rangers Islanders are going to play there as well, either before or after them. So, yeah, I think it's a back to back thing. Smart job by the NHL getting both those four teams involved. Listen, I know the Sharks are going to suck for a while, but it, it, you know, you had the one game against the Kings that was, uh, was it Levi Stadium or the Giant Stadium? I forget, but I'd, I'd like, I think it was Levi Stadium. I would like to see that happen again out here. So, that's just for selfish reasons. But that'll do it for this edition. Of better hockey now on the better sports network and fantasy alarm we went through every division we went through both conferences we went through our stanley cup championship picks next week we're going to do a award futures who's going to take over the selkie from bergeron we're going to tell you next week right here on better hockey now but for mr christopher Morez and mr ant rivera i'm adam bernard back with you next week on bhn better hockey now is on the better sports network